What's up guys, it's November 3rd, 2023. Had a pretty good day in the markets. We had a continuation from yesterday, strong gap up and a broader bull channel. So the market's slowly transitioning into a range, which is part of the market cycle. We trend in the range and then trend in the range and then trend in the range. But there's intricacies within that. So yesterday's price action was a small pullback bull trend. These things tend to go on forever because people keep getting trapped shorting. So definitely a tough day to trade if you're not familiar with the price action for the bulls. I used to get wrecked on these days, but I did all right yesterday. Just real quick, you know, the bulls had a gap up with really good continuation on bar one. Like that is really good continuation after a big gap up. But that doesn't mean that doesn't mean they're gonna shoot up. You know, they still need their pullback and they keep the gap open to the EMA for quite some time and start tagging it after, after like the spike, this, it's a gap up spike in channel, deep two legged pullback. And today we see a continuation, but it's more broad. Strong gap up above yesterday's high. This is a bull bar, remember? I'm gonna draw this one in, cause just because so we can learn price action better, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, strong gap up and follow through. However, this today's follow through is a little more wicky and it's a it's just like a little more climactic because yesterday was steady buying all day. Bar three breaks out of the, the two bar range and they go for a measured move. They get two R of the measured move, just barely two R. Um, the dark lines are so this is 100% let me draw it. this is the move 100% 200% so 1R that was so weird drawing it like that and then 2R so they got 2R it makes sense to take profits and the bull bars are shrinking instead of the bull bars getting stronger they're getting smaller with more wicks so we transition from a trend bar to range bars there's only two types of bars. There's trend bars and range bars, and this this first six bars has both. But we have more trend. We have more range bars. We have one big bull bar. We have two bullish trading range bars, a trend bar, and then this is about 50/50. If these if this bull closed a little bit higher, it would have been nicer, and we could have drifted maybe more. But I think people started to see this as three pushes up on a smaller time frame after a parabolic move. Parabolic, I, I use that term loosely. I'm not saying like it's over for the day. It's just like, this is clim climactic is the correct word. I shouldn't have said parabolic. I think this is more like climactic with three pushes up on smaller time frames. Mm -hmm. Then I think that was a news bar. This is a really nice reversal bar. I didn't take it because I didn't want to be the first bear to short, but the market races up. It fills all the orders and if bulls don't hit out fast enough, they're going to get trapped. This bar here covers them. If they buy the high of this bar, they can get out at the 50% level from the hot buying the high. So they buy, they get filled one tick here. They buy more above that bar, and they get out for a little bit of money. This is how traders. This is how the market is moving off traps and break evens and bears and bulls are trapping and sh getting out at the same time. So. Bulls are trapped, but, but they still make their money. If they buy here and buy more lower above the breakout bar, they get filled, race up to the 50%, they get break even at 50%, and then they make about a point after the 50%. So that's good for the bulls. If you take a reasonable trade, you should have a way to get out. So I wanted to, I should have I kept my fibs up real quick. So this is about kind of what we just had. And you guys may not like, oh, that's not true. The market doesn't move like that. And that's fine if you don't believe that. But let's just say it did. And the bulls bought here and they bought here. They make their money and they get out. So bulls short the same level bears short a double top. So you might not believe it, but it makes sense in that in this exact moment. And it took me a while to understand this. And the reason I'm talking about it is because I'm trying to understand it more. That's why I said the word believe because you almost have to believe the market moves like that before you can learn it like it's a weird I've been watching a lot of Mark Douglas videos lately so yeah so the market's 
pulling back into the EMA. It's a deeper pullback than yesterday. We have leg one from here to here and leg two, maybe leg three fails. And, and they keep the gap open. I'm gonna delete the first gap of the day now. Uh, that's not, the gap is like this. Something, something like that. This is a bull gap. Still bullish pressure. I don't think this is good to short. Maybe you take the, maybe you take this, but I think we should all just be buying unless you know you're an advanced trader. Then you do as you please. This is an expanding bear flag, but there's way more bullish pressure and not very deep bear, or not, excuse me, not bear wicks, but not very long wicks for the bears showing like that they're shorting the highs of this bar because this bar is a pretty strong bar, but it bounced. And if these candles had more wicks, we could interpret that like the market's laced up here. But I think people were already waiting for about two hours to buy the EMA. This is the bar 18, so it's about two hours into the session already. And we can already see that there's more selling pressure today than yesterday. The market's move creating a good pattern for us here. Okay, I'm gonna delete this one and draw the other one back. You guys see the bull flag? I did take this trade, but I took it from a breakout perspective of this. I got filled around there. It was just a scalp. I had to scalp it because I was not sure where the market was. Obviously this is the high tick, so that is like the official hot high of the day but there's resistance here so I just went for a quick scalp because I wasn't sure where we turn around but a breakout above here would be my preferred trade so here's the bull flag we have two pushes we have five pushes total we have a there's the pole have one excuse me hold on one two three four five and it broke out I was counting the reversals, but this is, we didn't really make a new low like this. So I counted this as one leg, pulled back two legs, pulled back. And the legs are getting better for the bulls, weaker for the bears. And then we break out. 50% of the time these breakouts can fail, 50% of the time they can go. Just, we have to interpret, that's where we, that's where our price action skills come in, right? We read like, is today more bearish or bullish? Today to me is a bullish day with the gap up being held with yesterday's trend i think the bulls have a better chance of a breakout than the bears even if you can't see the trade there's a bear trade in here maybe someone with a bigger account like hedge fund i'm talking not individual traders so we're drifting higher this was a successful breakout of the triangle breakout and a slow drift they get two legs and we start to stall a little bit around the hot and that's that's normal because that's where that's resistance Sellers are waiting at the highs and buyers wait at lows. However, the bulls break out and they start to pull back. Pullbacks are taking a little bit longer today, a little more bearish pressure. But I think the market is now looking at this as a some sort of wedge. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you have to know what you're looking at. That's the most important thing. There's a double top higher high right here, or the, the previous wedge I just drew or you can have the wedge from the, the wick. Let me delete that. What's important is that this point is all pretty similar. We're just trying to, if that makes sense, like, like let's say I do something like this. Like that's just, okay, that wouldn't even go. You can't draw the wedge unless they're all pretty similar. So you see what I mean? Although the, where it starts is different, where it ended was the same, so that's kind of like the tipping point or something. That's, that that word tipping point is not Al Brooks terminology, I just said it on the fly. But he does talk about drawing trend lines that meet up into one spot. Excuse me. So we pull back into the EMA after a double top. Here's the high of the day, double top around the high. I think a lot of bears were eager to short, at least to the EMA as their first target, and then their second target would be the middle of this this range. Ranges are ranges are balance zones. So 
there's equal there's equal the bulls and bears are equal here so that's where they'd want to get to we start to drift lower and they bulls try again to break the hot and fail so this now now we're getting some bear sentiment sentiment here we have a double top with a lower high and a rejection at the previous high bulls have a double bottom try and push higher the new high of the day they fail to make a new high and bears push down the market is range bound this is pretty bad if when, once the market starts to do things like this it's better for new traders to just wait for follow through on either side just like two bull bars or like a bull bar with good follow through or a bear bar with good follow through and neither side are getting follow through at high so immediately remember the last leg in a trend is the first leg in a range bears made money here so they're gonna try and make money again you see so the market's ranging with some with I think it's a uh, range is 50 50 that's why the markets range all the time bulls are buying lows and bears are shorting highs bulls try and go for a new high and they don't get they do get a new high but it's not a strong close bears short the new high giving the giving the overall day a wedge top appearance I think that's a pretty strong pattern but I didn't take it because I'm just I think more time nine times out of ten I'd get shredded than actually catching a reversal after a strong bull move but it's still good to watch so we can study the price action and the wedge top goes they get two legs down and they continue to sell for the rest of the day that's really good for the bears oh, I'm just gonna let the day finish they get two legs down and then oh <laughs> that was the day and we still have a broad bull channel I delete this red line now it's 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 broad so buy low sell high buy the bottom channel sell the upper channel if you if you choose to you can also sell short to the lows but beginners should just stick to the width trend entries until they have consistent profitability per Albrooks I'm gonna update the charts with you guys so we broke out of last week's high and I want to see if we got a measured move actually Wow, we did get a measured move. I really, that's crazy because when I was doing this, I was like, I doubt. I saw this candle and I was like, I doubt we get a measured move of this range and it happened. So price action is fractal and there's the proof. That's the same pull I do on the five minutes on the daily and it got met. That's that's pretty, that's pretty good to know. That's cool. And we're right back in the apex of this range. That's how we talked about in five minute. We are in the middle of the, ba the previous balance zone. So price action is factual, and now we can start to see how the five minute, how the five minute charts were still applying the same thing on daily, which is so cool to me. It's kind of nerdy, I guess. Well, it's not that nerdy. It is a little bit, but it's cool nerdy. So I'm gonna update these lines on the weekly chart so we can see where we're at going into this week. Jesus, bulls. The bulls put in some work the Thursday or Wednesday and what was it? Thursday and Friday. Uh, let me get the 50% level real quick. I had I, I didn't look at the weekly chart one time until now. And that is just crazy to see. I'm going to lock these levels. So going into the week, look, last week's high was 4,393 and the low is 4144. That's a pretty big range. I guess the market, we'll see what happens around the EMA. Maybe we pull back. Maybe we get another measured move. Can you imagine if the market just went straight up? Wow. So a measured move from here puts us at around the high. Maybe we do the body. So that could happen over time and give the market a double top appearance. This looks like a pretty strong wedge bottom on the weekly. Mm. Push one push two is the bottom of this wick and this makes push three so that's three pushes down bull flag wedge bottom hmm bull flag see the bull flag leg one leg two leg three pull back leg one leg two leg three 
So it's really cool. We can see the price action is working on the daily or the weekly time frame as well. Let's go back to the daily chart and see where we're at. So we're really close to October's high. Maybe we tag that. October's high is the closest magnet or the EMA might be the magnet. About 40 points away from October's high. And we have we already see a wick here, so maybe it sells off a little bit and pull back, but I think this leg is strong enough to get continuation. Leg one, leg two. Let's see, leg one to the body to body, and then I project it from the 50% level. And that takes us to the next balance zone. That's literally, literally the apex of this. Apex, balance zone, something. We can see how the pieces are starting to fit together a little bit better. I hope you guys are updating your charts as well. You don't have to copy my levels, but you know whatever works for you. Maybe you like four hour charts or one hour charts or something. Nice, so it did update on the hourly time frame. I'm gonna slide this one up a little bit. Be a little more accurate here. A little more. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. This is the same lines we just did on the daily. Now we're looking at the hourly. And they got about three pushes up too. The bulls here we have one. So we have micro wedge. One, two, three. Or we have one, two, three. Kind of connected. That's not the best line. However, we get the picture though. This, they got three pushes up and we're at, we're at a previous we're at the previous sell-off, actually. This is where the downtrend started last month. It'll be interesting to see what happens going into the week. I hope you guys are doing good. It's the, it's like, I think it's like almost pretty much official holiday season. I already seen some people taking down their Halloween things like November 1st, so. Halloween's my favorite holiday. Let me know what your favorite holiday is in the comments. Keep studying price action. Have a good weekend, guys. You guys are seeing this on Monday. I hope you guys had a good weekend. Talk to you guys later. Bye.